If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me tell you about it. It's free, which is amazing. And there are these really cool creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will even distribute your podcast for you. So it's easy to be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you get podcasts. And you get to make money with no minimum listenership, which is really cool. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started right away. Yoga teachers, mindfulness leaders, and energy workers, are you ready to stop side hustling and start making an income doing what you love? Welcome to the Marketing Off the Map podcast. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we'll dive into conversations with successful creatives in wellness, business, marketing, and more to uncover practical methods to take you from A to B and have some fun along the way. My name is Jessica Cross, and I'm so excited to be here with you. Let's dive in. Welcome back to Marketing Off the Mat. It's Jess. I'm so thrilled that you're here today. And I cannot wait for you to hear this chat that I had with my friend, Danielle Hayden. Danielle is a reformed corporate CFO who's on a mission to help rule-breaking female entrepreneurs understand their numbers so that they can gain the confidence they need to create sustainable profits. After spending 10 years in the boardroom, Danielle is now in her sweet spot as the CEO of Kickstart Accounting, where she helps business owners with bookkeeping, financial analysis, and education, and as the author of the Profit Planner book series. When Danielle isn't crunching numbers on her client's behalf or crafting the next iteration of the Profit Planner, you can find her hanging out with her two kids as she inspires them to lead their fullest lives or doing any and almost every fitness-related activity ranging from Spartan races to Pilates. You guys are going to love her so much. She's also been through teacher training. She has a huge passion for yoga and meditation and healing arts. I know that you're going to love her and you're going to get so much from these, this episode. Let's dive in. Hey, Danielle, how are you? I'm so good. Glad you're here. Thanks for yeah, taking the time. Yeah, no, I'm very excited for this conversation. Um, I was telling you before we hit record, this is just like one, my passion project to, to talk about, um, money and numbers and help uh, entrepreneurs uh, help like understand this like really difficult topic um, and then two I just have um, a passion for fitness and, and yoga specifically so it's t- speaking to my souls and, and and all the ways that's amazing I mean we need you really <laughs> like we we need some yoga in our numbers for sure so yeah so glad that you're here <laughs> So we learned a little bit about you in the intro, but I just want to just give a quick synopsis. Like, tell me a little bit about you. Tell the listeners about you. If like we're sitting around having tea and how did this amazing journey that you've been on bring you to today? Yeah. So, um, I actually started as, um, a cosmetologist. a cosmetologist. I was doing hair and, um, decided that, um, realized through that experience that I loved the numbers piece, um, where I, I loved getting into, you know, how much of, of how many haircuts do I need to do to hit the commission numbers? And I started to realize that there was this whole science behind the numbers. And then, um, you know, fast forward, you know, 10 years ended up, um, going back to school. And I really thought I just wanted to be an, an entrepreneur. I wanted to open my own hair salon but I kept on coming back to the numbers and this love and passion for how the numbers get us to our goals and how it leads us to success and it leaves clues and breadcrumbs. So um, I was working in, in corporate accounting as a CFO and was doing some volunteer work at a local entrepreneurship hub here. And I kept on seeing the same problem over and over again. Um, business owners couldn't submit a business plan or Uh, apply for an additional loan or budget their next 12 months because they didn't have any bookkeeping in place. And they didn't have any bookkeeping in place because they didn't understand the numbers. And it was so overwhelming to them that they can never move forward. Um, So Kickstart was created. It was, it was born from there. We, we realized that uh, we had to help entrepreneurs get their uh, bookkeeping in place. They needed help in understanding the numbers. We needed to release all this shame and fear and money mindset and all this, um, 
junk that holds us back as, as entrepreneurs. So just helping business owners get through all of that so that they can grow and succeed and live the life that they want. So I am so lucky. I get to wake up every morning and be so full and, um, and, and live in this purpose, um, at Kickstart accounting. I love it. That's incredible. Wow. What an incredible journey and, and using your, your previous, you know, versions of yourself to like little breadcrumbs, as you said, like figuring out what, what lights you up, like what your like unique purposes and to serve in this world. And that's so incredible. I love that story. Yeah. I had no idea at the time, you know what I mean? Like sometimes you're having these experiences and you don't, you don't know why, and you don't know what it's, what it's going to bring in the future. But now when I reflect back, I, I'm like, Oh God, well, that makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) And thank God it finally does. Right. (laughs) Seriously. Cause that felt like a a loan in the desert. (laughs) Well, it's interesting. Cause I, I really was, I was the only one in the hair salon who, um, even looked at our paycheck and asked questions and dug in and, and I, I would say, Hey guys, did you look and did you, did you calculate? Like, um, shouldn't you have hit that commission number? And, you know, well, if you would have just done two more haircuts, you would have gotten it. And nobody else was thinking that way. So I, maybe I should have thought, thought about it then, uh, but I didn't. It wasn't until now that, and I'm, and I'm rehaving that conversation with people. I'm like, this is just, it's a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And just like how fulfilling that it must be to see kind of probably some light bulbs turn on. It's like, Oh, if I just would make this small tweak and the way that I'm approaching things, be yeah. it, you know, hair or the number of classes people are teaching every week or, or whatever it is, it's like, then things start to shift for people. Just understanding your, your money. So like understanding, like where am I spending money? Am I maximizing my tax deductions? Um, am I tracking anything? Like, do I, do I even track anything? Uh, I, I have a saying that I use all the time. What gets uh, measured gets, or I'm sorry, um, what gets monitored gets measured. So how do you even know if you're not actually monitoring it? right? Like you have to be monitoring the numbers. You have to be watching them because it leaves clues and imagine getting to do more of what you love and what's working and less of what's not working and what less of what's not giving you energy. Like that's pretty, pretty magical. And your numbers are leaving you clues on how to do that. Mm, Yeah. It just, like you said, they're clues. Mm -hmm. to things and your inner, your energy matches those too. Like you said, it's like, we're doing, you know, you know, potentially you're teaching a 20 drop in classes a week where that's absolutely draining you. But if you would just maybe shift your energy away from that into something that actually has a higher ticket, then, you know, you could, you could notice the difference, not only in your numbers in the books, but like how you feel, how you're showing up. Yeah, absolutely. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's huge. So one of the things I know that you're really passionate about, and and honestly, as a business owner, this super piqued my interest when we started to talk about this was uh, evaluating shiny objects as business owners. And there are a lot of shiny (laughs) objects. So, So tell me a little bit, what the heck is a shiny object when you're in the entrepreneurial space? And how do we evaluate and decide like what's the best for us? Yeah. So as entrepreneurs, we are so, we are advertised to more than I think any other group. And then add, you know, being a woman on top of it, we are heavily, heavily marketed to. And so shiny objects are just about anything. (laughs) Um, Big shiny objects could be um, training programs, right? So I want, so maybe you're somebody who's constantly in in different training programs, uh, coaching, mentorship. Um, subscriptions that you need in order to, to, to run your business. Um, they can be s- small things like equipment and supplies. Um, but how many supplies are you purchasing? So um, when, I, when I say shiny objects, they can be small things that really add up and cr- can create can create a mountain, right? Like it just looks like one little rock, right? Like I'm just spending one little rock right now. But when I look at all the rocks put together, what does that actually 
what does that actually create? Like how much am I actually spending in that, in that area? So shiny objects can be any of those things. Um, I have a few ways that I like to suggest that, that entrepreneurs use um, uh, to evaluate their shiny object syndrome. And I want to say that this is without judgment and without bias because like we have enough shame. <laughs> we don't need to shame ourselves anymore. Um, so when I say know your numbers and look at these things and um, journal it out and, and know why you're spending money in these places and, and, and wait before you, you jump into shiny objects. I'm really saying that from a place of zero judgment, um, zero shame and in a place of, of self-love because we can't shame our way into better behavior. So, uh, sometimes when I bring up money, people instantly like turtle in a shell, <laughs> they retreat back to their yeah. shell. Because we're shaming ourselves and we're, we have so much guilt around our, our, our spending and not understanding this topic. So um, the first way of, of determining a shiny object uh, is to look at your, your past purchases. Um, I would like every single person, um, this doesn't matter if you're just teaching um, and, and you receive a 1099 um, or if you are a stu studio owner, I want everybody to have a tracking software where, and that's keeping track of your income and expenses. And then I want you to keep your business and your personal expenses completely separate. This is really important from an IRS perspective, um, all, as well from a bookkeeping perspective. And then most importantly for you, for an analysis perspective, so that you can put together a picture of where am I making money? Where am I spending money? And what pivots do I need to make so that I'm not overpaying on taxes, and I'm maximizing my, my income. So um, the first step of evaluating shiny objects is to have a system in place where you can go backwards and look at trends and you can look and see, does this purchase make sense for me as I move forward to my, towards my goals? Mm. Yeah, holy cow. Like that's like light bulb moments for me here. And, and as we're saying, shiny objects are this like pile of rocks. I was like, should it be piles of crystals since we're in the yoga space? <laughs> yes, we can do crystals. <laughs> <laughs> they're shiny, right? <laughs> they are shiny, yes, they're totally Man, crystals. But yeah, they are so shiny. Like I, and I, you, like you just kind of put a fine point on it as women entrepreneurs, maybe even in this space specifically, we are very heavily marketed to be it from, you know, VA companies or a new mastermind that's coming out or this like brand new, like virtual event software that you've got to have for your upcoming workshop or whatever it is. We have basic like the good and the bad of it is we basically can have anything that we want and yeah. we've got to decide the difference between like, do we really need to have that? Or is that something that can wait or perhaps isn't even necessary because of the other 15 pieces of yeah. software that you've already yes. had? Yes. <laughs> necessary. So I think that's really important. So if you are not, if you're not ever looking at this information, you're not tracking it. You're likely overspending in places that you don't even realize. So did you sign up for that software and never use it? Or you actually outgrew the functionality? Um, or do you already have that piece of equipment in five other different colors? So, you know, by looking backwards, you're able to see like, what are my trends? Like, where do I tend, where do I tend to um, sprinkle my crystals? <laughs> yeah, I love that. And, you know, we're talking about tracking do you recommend a specific type of software are you are you do you know people that do just straight up google sheets or what do you what do you recommend so i want everybody in quickbooks online um it is the most amazing software um i know a lot of people will say to me danielle i'm not big enough i'm not doing enough i don't need quickbooks online but i promise you what happens is that you have a shift in your mindset that because you have the tracking system in place you're now like telling the universe I'm open for growth, right? Like we hear from, from our clients all the time. Like, I didn't even know that this was going to happen, but the moment that I started working with you, all of a sudden growth felt possible. And so I feel the same way about your accounting software. You're by, by opening up QuickBooks online, those reports, maybe you don't need them today, 
but I promise you one day you're going to say, Hey, Danielle, thank you so much for telling me to open this because there's going to be a report that you want ran and you're going to be able to run that report in QuickBooks and have that information that's going to give you the analysis that you need. And you're going to be able to open up your mindset, open up to the universe and say, I'm here, I'm showing up and I'm willing to have this in, in my life. Um, Google Sheets doesn't allow you to create an income statement for your, your, your tax return. Um, it'll give you pieces of it, but let's be real. Um, how many times did you go to the store and totally forget that you spent money? Like, I mean, all the time, all the time, all the time. I can't remember what I had for dinner last night. Um, so by separating it, right. Business and personal, every time I spend money on, on, on anything that's related to, to business, I put out my business credit card. And then when I get that information in my accounting system, I can now categorize it in a way that's going to allow me to see, see trends because a Google sheet, how's a Google sheet going to show you a trend? It's not. Yeah. So I want you to categorize it and then be able to look at trends because this is all about finding the trends so that you can learn and adjust and correct and, and move forward. Not again, not to shame yourself. Like, Oh my God, Danielle, I don't want to put in how many times I'm eating at that place <laughs> or, um, you know, how many times I go to that store because that, because you're meeting the numbers with shame. I want you to see it as I need to learn from that experience and maybe like journal and reflect and meditate on like, why do I feel like I need that, that, like, why do I keep on spending money in that place? Like, maybe I need to re really reflect on that um, and, and see why, like, what void am I trying to fill? Mm, yeah, there's so much more to how we actually spend our money than, you know, what meets the eye often. And we don't sit with it because, you know, everything's on a plastic card or it's so virtual even more these days where we're not actually swiping we're just hitting in a couple of numbers and hit pay yeah. now so, yeah you could like literally just scan your card as you walk by <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you got your so apple funny. watch you know it's that's it's so easy so yeah like to really take some time as if we would with anything else that we do any other important decisions or trends that we're trying to see in our own lives and our own energy like apply this to your finances that's genius yeah. I mean, it's the same way that you plan for a class, right? <laughs> like, yeah. it, like I, I know that we're all capable of it because we're all willing to willing and able to step back, make a plan for our class and make, make a, make a plan for, for training, uh, make a plan for a workshop. So we're capable of it, but are we willing to be uncomfortable? Because again, I'm, I'm willing to accept the fact that this topic is uncomfortable for people. But just like teaching your first class was uncomfortable and you got through it and that made, and over time you became more comfortable. It's the same thing with money. Like the first time that you look at this, it's going to be uncomfortable, but the more you make it an exercise, the more that you make it part of your routine and your habits and your consistency over time, it's going to be something that, that you're able to be more comfortable with. Mm, yeah, that's so good. That's, it, it's such a great analogy too. Just the more we can get comfortable with being uncomfortable, even when it comes to finances, the good, the bad, and the ugly, like the better, the better we all are going to be because that energy just goes out into when we're serving, mm -hmm. we're Absolutely. serving the students and, and et cetera. Like, so I, I just love that analogy. Um, so I want to talk a little bit, sort of a pivot but I want to talk a little bit about what a financial goal is and how does a yoga teacher define that or meditation or healer teach uh, that's listening in? Like how, how do we set one of those? Why do we need one? And what are some steps that someone could take today to, to move towards that? Yeah. So the financial goal could be, can be anything. So some, I hear a lot from our clients in this space that setting a financial goal feels greedy. Or because I'm, I'm here to serve, um, I'm here to help others. Like, I don't need to have a goal because then that would detach me from my mission of helping and healing others to, to, to money. Right. And so I, I, I think a lot of our clients struggle in this space to move from that place of service, um, to understanding that we need money, right? Unfortunately, we do, right? We all have to put a roof over our head. 
uh, food on our plate, we have to, like, we need to have money. And so it's okay to ask for money in exchange for our services and for um, the, the service that you're providing in the world, right? Um, so a financial goal would be like how much revenue you want to bring into your business. Um, however, um, I think that there's a lot of gurus out there that are saying, gross revenue, just bring in more money, more money, more money. And I want to go one step further than that. And yes, you can set a goal. Like I want to bring in X amount of money this year or this month. And I need to do that, not just to support my family, but for my family to thrive. Um, so that would be the goal is how could my family thrive? But then once I pay my expenses, what's left over, right? Like what do I actually have home to take home in my pocket? And so that's really the goal that I want you to pay attention to is how much money do I have left over after all my expenses so that I can, I can continue to invest in myself, right? So when I do choose a shiny object, right? So maybe I choose this shiny object. I want to take this course or this mastermind or um, this training, and I've made this conscientious choice, I can invest in that because I've, I've hit these goals and I planned for this expense. And so um, some other uh, examples of some financial goals would be like, maybe there's a large training program that you, you want to invest in um, or a retreat that you want to go on personally. Um, these are all examples of financial goals. So if, if for you saying, making $10,000 a month, um, feels too like selfish. I like, why do I need that? Maybe detaching yourself from that, um, would be easier to say, I need to save X amount in order to be able to go on this, this retreat or to be able to hold this retreat, um, or take my family on this vacation or whatever, uh, purchase this home. Like it can be something if, if just, earning more money overall to serve your entire life feels too big. You can also attach it to one thing that is in the future that you're willing to invest in. Hmm. I love that. There's just, I, I think it's a pervasive uh, mindset and, th and thought process that we have, especially in our industry. It's just like, you know, money is bad. Money is mm -hmm. terrible. It makes me a bad person to receive money in exchange for the healing practices that I'm putting out into the world or holding space for other people's healing. I can't charge for that. And I just love what you said, because it, it's, it doesn't have to necessarily be attached to this like giant, like I want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year. And then suddenly you see people's shoulders run forward and they're like, Oh, I'm a bad person. But it's like, no, like if you can attach it to, to an experience that you want for your family, for yourself to lead others in, maybe that's like just what you need, a, a tiny little mindset shift and, and actually like bringing in that money. And, you know, you can always back to our journaling processes that we're talking about, like maybe dig in a little bit, like wh what is it about money or this, these like money stories that we have that have made us feel like it's not okay for us to charge. It's there. We all have this money mindset through all of our experiences, our childhood, um, what we've, you know, chosen to do with our lives and how we got here. We all have a money story. So it really is important to, to reflect on that and, and, um, understand that so that you can, you can heal, right? Like talk about healing others and, and like you need, you yourself need to heal. And if you can attach it to maybe, maybe it is a training or a retreat or a vacation, imagine by investing in that, by, by being able to achieve that, you're actually going to turn around and show up better and heal heal more people and heal in a better way and be able to show up and give in a better experience because you took that time, reinvested in yourself and um, re-energized yourself. And that doesn't have to be like some big retreat, right? Like it can be uh, something really small. Like it could just be like a massage next Friday. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds pretty great, actually. <laughs> I know, seriously. But, but taking that time away, you can show up and, and have an even better experience, like give an even better experience. Mm, yeah, I love that. I love that. And it can just be so much more than 
a couple of zeros added to your like annual income goal. It, it can be, you know, really anything that you want. Like, and even having an extra few zeros, like think about the legacy you're living, leaving your, your family, your kids, maybe your niece, your nephew, um, helping, helping your parents retire, like whatever that is, you know, I hate, I hate the um, term that we all grew up with, like filthy rich, like, no, it's, it doesn't have to be filthy, right? Like, how about it's like health as wealth, or like, it's Mm -hmm. like, well, it's wealth, right? And, and what do we do with wealth, we can help others. So again, going back to serving and healing and helping, we can use the the extra money that comes in to help others leave a legacy for others and help build them up. Um, imagine if our children don't have to worry about money uh, because they see you thriving and that's going to contribute to their money story because your, your kids, your niece, your nephew, your family, they're all creating a money story right now, right this minute. And how are you contributing to their, their money story and helping heal their money story? Mm, That's, that's such, such a good point. And, you know, as you know, money comes in, it's where we're almost a conduit of where that money goes energetically. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not, we're kind of a steward of it when it comes in, we get to decide, you know, where it goes. Of course we want to pay our bills and feel fulfilled, but you know, are there, charities that we want this money to yeah. eventually go to like do we want to do more seva and our bills are paid while we're actually doing that you know it it's uh it's so much more than just like what's hitting your bank account and checking that at the end of the month so i love i love all that you had to offer there so great awesome yeah so for for the folks that are listening you know maybe they have their own money stories maybe they have their processes for finances and their business, maybe they're, they're not even sure like where to start. What would be a couple of tips for somebody who's listening right now that they could implement and kind of get some momentum going and help having a, a healthy relationship with their business finances? Yeah. So a few things. Um, a first step is acknowledging that there's a money story. Um, and then be willing to invest. And if you're made it this far into the podcast, you're willing. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't turn us off yet. Um, invest some time and energy in developing um, your money mindset. And that could be meditating and journaling. It can be listening to additional podcasts on, on money mindset. Um, I'll do a shameless plug. We do have a podcast on, on money mindset, entrepreneur money stories, but there's plenty of other podcasts, right? There's, there's books that you can um, listen or, or read that are about the psychology of money. And, and the more that you can invest in this topic, the more you're going to feel comfortable uh, with the process and, and, and making it okay, right? Like making it okay to, to allow yourself to save and spend and invest in your, in your business. Um, Some other things would be get comfortable with being uncomfortable, right? Like set a date that maybe, maybe it's just like your rest day that you have a CEO day, um, or 15 minutes <laughs> <You know>, like, <laughs> it's in your calendar. And you treat that time. Like I cannot miss this meeting because it is a meeting with somebody who's very important because you are very important. And this is very important. You have a responsibility to treat that money and, and, I, I always say the minute you decided to accept money for service, you became a business owner. And that minute that you did that, you now have a responsibility to your students. Your, but your, uh, if you're teaching at a studio, the studio owners, if you own the studio, your students, your, um, your staff, your contractors, your assistants, the vendors, like you have a responsibility to all of them. And so if you don't know where you're making money and spending money, you're, you're not, uh, you're not upholding that responsibility because if you go out of business or you can't continue to show up, you're letting somebody down. I promise you're letting somebody down. So, um, show up to this meeting. Cause it's really important. And then, um, we encourage everyone to do, um, uh, what we call a dashboard. And so the dashboard is just a quick overview um, if you don't have an accounting system, you you can still you can still do the dashboard. Um, do you want me to give you a quick 
quick run through of yeah that'd be great so um first is your cash uh easy one um then it's your credit cards line of credit um anything that you have supporting your business both the balance and availability and then who do you owe money to over the next 30 days this is really important because it's not like if you just look at your cash balance but you don't look at that you actually owe a bunch of bills next week you can go spend all that cash because you forgot about the bills um who owes me money right so what's coming in over the next 30 days and then um, lastly is your your sales so what have i brought in month to date compared to my goal this gives you a full picture to look at and say now when a shiny object comes in like i can make this decision really quick i didn't hit my goal yet i don't have any money coming in <laughs> i have a lot of bills next week right <laughs> my decision was just made pretty clear. But if I hadn't had that dashboard, I couldn't, like, I would be like, well, I have cash in my bank. So I guess maybe possibly, yeah, sure. It looks good. Um, so if you don't have anywhere to start, like this dashboard is a great tool to put in place and it can be in Excel. It can be, um, it, you know, if you like pen and paper and we, we have a, a template for it. So I'll, I'll give you that link as well so that you can include it in the, in the show notes for anybody who's like, uh, I heard you, but I <laughs> like, could you give me something to actually write this down on? <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely share that. But yeah, th that's like some solid, solid steps for, um, if you don't have anything in place to just get started and look, entrepreneurship life, it's all a marathon. It's not a sprint. So, you know, maybe today you just, you just download the dashboard, right? And next week during that time, maybe you fill out the cash piece and the credit card. And then the next week you go a little bit deeper. Um, the idea though, is that you just get started and you start taking action because momentum creates momentum. And once you get started, you'll start to feel good. Like, okay, I did this, right? It's like, it's the same feeling you get after a practice or a meditation session, right? It's all this, it's all the same. Like I did that. Okay. Like that felt really good. And I got through the, the discomfort. And now when I go to show up again, I know what to expect and it'll be a little uncomfortable and I, I can do it. Mm, yeah. That's, that's such great advice. And I can't wait to see that dashboard. That sounds like incredible, incredible tools. Thank you for sharing it with us. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I love asking this question and I can't wait to ask it to you too. So if you could go back in time to any portion of your career, your earlier versions of yourself and say something to you that would save you a couple sleepless nights, a headache, <laughs> you know, something that was like, man, I wish I would have known this then, what would that be? Oh, I like wish I would do this now, um, listen to my intuition. And, you know, I can't say that to my daughter enough. And um, I wish I would have, um, I wish somebody would have given me permission to listen to my intuition. And that's like big or small things. Like I'm gonna give a really stupid example, but it's really funny. I, I was making a casserole for dinner and I opened up the cabinet and I was like, I really don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to go get that casserole dish. And I am like, I don't know why, like, okay, too bad. You need to go get it. You know? So I step on this stool and all of a sudden casserole dishes that were on top of the casserole dishes came flying on my head. I, I mean, it's still like sensitive oh. and shattered all over the floor, my favorite pants, but like, why did I, why did I not want to do it? Right. Like, and then why didn't I listen to that and say like, Hey, honey, can you get the casserole pan done? Like, and just list, like, that's something so small, but it, there's, I can think of over and over and over again in my life where I felt something or I maybe like mentioned it to my mom <laughs> and, and then it, and then it happened. And I'm like, why, why didn't I give myself permission to dig into that a little bit deeper or really listen to why I thought that way or felt that way? Um, so uh, yeah, it, just listening to our intuition. Yeah. And, and I, I can so relate to that and I'm sorry about your, the bump on your head. I feel, I feel like I probably have a million stories, very similar, just like, you know, with those moments too. And we're like, man, I wish I would have just trusted my gut in that situation. Like what would have happened? 
and you, you're kind of like, ah, oh, come on. Like, and you, but that those instances, you're like, you know what? I'm, I'll remember that. So the next time it comes around, you, you gotta really remember that because it happened like three times in two days that I was, I was like, why are you like, why do you keep, why do you keep saying like, don't listen to that. Like, so I think it's a, um, a journey and a process to like really listen to that and, and say like, okay, like, why am I feeling this way? Like, remember last time I felt this way and it went badly. Like, listen, <laughs> give yourself yeah. a minute. Don't, don't do it or, or evaluate why you're feeling that way. Yeah. Yeah. I hope, I hope you get some more casserole dishes too. <laughs> They're gone. My favorite one's gone. <laughs> well, fortunately you have your dashboard. You're going to be able to see like yes. exactly where that's coming in. <laughs> I'll be able to plan the spending. Yes. Yes. So it's full circle for sure. <laughs> no, that, that's very generous. We're really like, I, I think we can all like relate to a situation where that has not been like listened to and we, we wish. And I feel like it's, it's a practice in its own. Like we're, we're going to, we're not going to always remember to yeah. listen. Yeah. yeah. It is a practice. Yeah, absolutely. So I know you have some really cool stuff out there. Tell us a little bit more about how we can connect with you, what things you have coming up and how we can stay in touch. Yeah. So we recently launched entrepreneur money stories. Um, it is our podcast digging into all things, money mindset, um, we have entrepreneurs coming on sharing their stories and their tips and tricks. And so it's full of all kinds of action packed, um, takeaways. Um, my team and I are doing some really fun reels on Instagram, uh, kickstart accounting. You can find us there. Um, they're really funny and just, uh, they are. <laughs> Really good. Like if you didn't think accounting could be fun, I want you to go check out Kickstart Accounting because they are making it really funny. Um, and then if, if any of this resonated with you and you want to talk about your specific situation, we are accepting new clients right now. So, um, or you just want to talk about your specific situation, we can talk through it. Um, you can come and find us at kickstartaccountinginc.com and um, schedule time to talk to the team and I, and, and, you know, I really truly mean it. We're, we're here to serve, right? We're here to be a resource for business owners because I don't know, we all have a passion. We all have this thing that we're, we're really good at. And then as soon as you start accepting money in return, you're like, Oh wait, now I'm supposed to be chief financial officer, CEO, head of sales, head of marketing. And so like that can be really lonely and isolating because we weren't trained on how to do all those things. So um, we're happy to be uh, one resource um, in your in your toolkit. That's so generous, and yes, like for all the hats that we have to wear, just having a person alongside you to kind of navigate the crazy world of entrepreneurship, especially when it comes to finance, is incredible. So we'll definitely share the links to your podcast, which is so exciting, and your Instagram, and how people can book with you and get to know a little bit more about what you guys offer for sure. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for being on today. It was so great getting to chat. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Did you love that chat just as much as I did? Because I got so much out of just that short amount of time with Danielle. So definitely check out the show notes because I'm going to be sharing all of her incredible resources right there. So check out her podcast, Entrepreneurial Money Stories, and head over to Instagram and Facebook for Kickstart Accounting Inc. or at Kickstart Accounting on Instagram. Definitely check out her availability if you want to schedule a discovery call with her to see if Kickstart Accounting can help you with your business. Look for that link. And then also she's got two awesome free resources for you. A free five-day video boot camp, five days to transform your financial fear to clarity. Heck yes. And then what she talked about in this episode specifically today was the daily dashboard worksheet and videos. So this is going to be an incredible resource. I know I'm going to grab, so you grab it too. Check those links out, give her a follow, and tell me what you thought of this episode. Did this help you feel a little bit more open and free when it comes to approaching your finances? Maybe taking another look at your money story. I'd love to know more. Send me a DM on Instagram. It's at jessicacross.co. Sending you so much love. I'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Off the Map podcast. I love hanging with you as we figure this thing out together. Do you have an idea or something to share with me? Send me a DM on Instagram at, at jessicacross.co and let me know what's on your mind. I'd be so grateful if you shared this with someone who could use this episode. And 
if you get a chance, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Catch you on the next episode. See ya.